Welcome to the world of Souls Likes, where you'll see many fantastic sights and many beautiful landscapes. However, you must be aware, you will die over and over and over again. Is it worth the frustration of constantly battling against your will to live? Is it worth the frustration of throwing your controller against the wall? I'm here to tell you why it is. I'm back again. This week it's all about one of my favorite subjects. Dark Souls, Souls Likes, Souls Borns, Neo, Sekiro, whatever you want to call them. Um, really, I want to talk about three primary things. Are they worth the punishment? I want to talk about why I'm excited for Elden Ring. I'll do it here so you can see. And um, really, why I love them so much and why they've turned kind of my own gaming experience around. Um, just before I start, we're going to cut to Luke. Uh, basically the guy who's responsible for making me so balls deep into Soulsborne, Souls likes, etc. Um, and yeah, just to basically tell you why it's so important to him and why he loves them. If it wasn't for Dark Souls, respawning wouldn't even exist. I built this whole website off of the back of hearing some people talking about Dark Souls and I thought, you know what, I want to get a piece of that pie. It's absolutely no secret to anyone who knows me that I love Dark Souls. I mean... I've been running through all the games recently, trying to platinum them, do everything, and I absolutely cannot wait for Elden Ring to come out. Ghost of Tsushima, that recently came out as well, um, was a game that everyone has been absolutely adoring, but the parallels drawn between the likes of Sekiro, Neo, um, and Neo 2 uh, have absolutely ruined that game for me, and it just doesn't really work for me. The, the focus on the parry heavy combat, feudal Japan, sort of all of the soulsy ish stuff that it does. It's just Sekiro and Neo and Neo 2 just all do everything better. The Soulsborne franchise is just, it's, it's a genre of its own and it stands above everything else that ever existed. Nothing even compares to it to me. I mean, I've got a Dark Souls tattoo, I've got Dark Souls merchandise, t-shirts, posters, the lot. I don't know what it is about the games, but nothing else has ever made me want to continue just playing through the game again and again and again and again i think on dark souls 3 i'm on new game plus 15 now on my third save so this tells you kind of how much time and effort i just want to continuously put into those games dark souls will forever hold a special place in my son heart thanks that luke and you know thanks for dropping some big old games from the year into that into that little segment i really appreciate that um, you know, I very much echo Luke's thoughts. Uh, why they're worth the punishment is because you can be spending, you know, a long time on a game, something like God of War or I don't know, Ghost of Tsushima that's come out just for recently, for example, or even um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and you'll be loving the combat and you'll be having an amazing time and there'll be an amazing story, and you know, it will be the best thing you've ever played, uh, without a doubt. And I was this way for a very long time until a couple of years ago. And then I personally, personally, obviously, then I experienced uh, Dark Souls. And then I experienced Dark Souls, and it was like nothing else. Now, I tried this before. Like I said, I've said this before. I tried Bloodborne. Um, I tried The Surge as well previously. But I'd never tried Dark Souls 1 properly. I borrowed Dark Souls 1. Uh, it was a mixture of, of Luke and Zeke, because I was living with Zeke at the time. He lent, he lent, or one of them lent Dark Souls to me. The other one helped me with the game. I can't remember which way around it was. And between the two of them, they got me into it and they were like, just play it. I started playing it and I didn't look back. Um, honestly, yes. I, I played it for about 20 hours, got frustrated, left it for a couple of months and came back to it and then you know, played the whole thing. And since then, I've, I've restarted Dark Souls a couple of times. Not quite got really far, but always loved it. And I've never looked back. Now, although just, the story is very abstract and, you know, it's not the best looking game in the world, but it's not the, not the worst by far. The combat is so rewarding and it... It just takes you to a different level of gaming, which sounds ridiculous, but it's all about this tight ass combat. Now, the stamina management system, which many other games have adopted, which was basically, you know, 
um, really utilised and kind of brought forward and almost created in this game is the best thing about the best leaping gaming I would say better than VR <laughs> better than Switch all that because it makes you think about your game your um, combat so much it makes you think about how much you're rolling how much you're dodging what you're doing to attack basically how you're playing the whole game every boss is tough as nails because they are usually quicker than you they've usually got more stamina so you have to manage your own stamina very well to, to overcome them so I think the stamina management um, as well as you know the, the perfect time parrying the blocking there's the armor management there's a gradual increase to, be, to being too heavy so if you've got slightly too much armor on you're not going to dodge as fast so right now I'm playing Dark Souls 3 and I can't get past the boss because my armor equipped is too hard too heavy so I'm gonna have to go in redo my armor and basically get to a point where I can actually be competitive again with this boss and I love that there are all these elements of gameplay they've dropped in that don't compare to anything else I've played before and they won't compare to anything else you've ever played before once you get past this barrier of it's a tough game I can't do it you know I'm not good enough get good uh, it's it's amazing and nothing does it honestly nothing compares I'm so happy that I've only played I've only completed Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne and Surge, so I've still got like Surge 2, both the Neo games, Sekiro, Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 2, if I want to, I have started that and I didn't love it, um, as, well as, as well as all the other ones that people have tried to recreate, Code Vein as well is another one, so I've got all these amazing Dark Souls likes games, and then of course, uh, we've got Demon's Souls, that's being remastered coming out on the PS5, which I'm really excited to play, because I never got around to that on the PS3 obviously, and Elden Ring. So why am I excited for Elden Ring? You've got Hidetaka Miyazaki creating the game, you know, the guy behind all the best from software games, and you've got George R. R. Martin writing a story. Now my only criticism, even though I've given most of the, all of the both Dark Souls 1 and 3 tens, is the story is very convoluted and unless you read all the books and everything else and get really into the lore, you don't really know what's going on. And me personally, I don't do that. You know, I didn't read all the books for Skyrim and Oblivion or Dragon Age or whatever. I, you know, I very much play the game and just get through it. <clears throat> and now, what's going to be amazing about Elden Ring is you're brought, you're going to be brought in this story from George R. R. Martin, obviously the guy behind Game of Thrones, um, into this world of perfect gameplay. But at the kind of peak point of of the gaming, like you know, Dark Souls One was a starting point and it was amazing. So how good is this game going to be all these years later? With this fantastic story, you know, kind of like I imagine it's going to be kind of Lord of the Rings medieval kind of style. You know, a proper story, um, this perfected gameplay, the beautiful graphics. I am so excited and I've got almost no doubt that Elden Ring will end up being my game of the year. Obviously I want to try and get for at least Dark Souls 3 before it comes out, so I haven't got long to do that. But that is pretty much, why, I mean that is it in a nutshell, that is why I'm so excited for, for Elden Ring. Um, but I can't imagine it being bad, How, that's not going to be bad is it, it's, it's going to be insane. The two of the best kind of uh, people in pop culture at the moment are, are making a video game. I mean, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Now, maybe George R. R. Martin needs to finish the Game of Thrones books before he does anything else, but I'm happy for him to take a break. Uh, we've all watched the series and we know what happens, so give that up and get on with making video games, dude. That's what I'd say. And my last point... Sorry. So anyway, I really kind of comp I mixed up the first point, the first, the first and last point in the, in the beginning, saying why it means so much to me and why it's worth the pain. But I will kind of say quickly why I love them so much. Um, I think, like, like I said, I I had never been into difficult games. I was always one to play on normal. Um, I never would go for a game that I thought was going to overly challenge me. I wanted to have a good time. I just wanted to chill out, play my video games, and go to sleep or whatever. What Dark Souls brings is a different element where you are punished on purpose and you are forced to play very, very well. Now, this, you know, as you've seen my Surge gameplay, and you've seen the, you know, all of us play these games, you know, Bloodborne is a difficult game, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, the satisfaction you get when you've beaten the boss um, is amazing. And I know that people have played God of War and taken on the Valkyries and they said the Valkyrie bosses were so fun but so hard. That is the whole of Dark Souls. So that is what you're missing out on, but for hours on end. And it's just the way that I've never learned a game so much. So Dark Souls 1, 
you know, I can remember every area because you have to go through it so many times to, to get good, to get experience, to level up. And and I've not played anything else where I can remember every single area, almost every step of the game, remembering what happens, you know, every single kind of minute or so. All the bosses. I remember more boss names in in Dark Souls than I do any other game. It's because it sticks in your head, it's because it's so ingrained. And what I like is that with every game is you know, they, they released, they seem to bring in different kind of elements of gameplay they drop something in here to make it slightly more enhanced they'll they'll put in a new kind of gear equip you know you've got the surge which kind of takes the idea and puts robots into it in a different kind of style of gear equip so yeah i just for me it kind of reinvigorated gaming as a whole i'm never bored of games because i've always got fifa and i've always got a dark souls game to the side and you know if i feel like having a bit of a punishing night i will play it but eventually after you've defeated the boss you've tried to take on for two or three hours you feel so satisfied although the surge didn't quite make me feel that way there's a kind of sense of self-satisfaction that no other game has brought me like dark souls has and i've screamed and banged on about it so many goddamn times but i just want all of you to go out and just give them a go go and get dark souls one you can probably get it for dirt cheap now and it's so worth your money and it's so worth your time and it's so worth the commitment so this is a recommendation for me play dark souls thank you for watching as always i've been javier this has been the lightning cave and this is your spawning don't forget to like subscribe follow us on twitter all of that other stuff and i'll see you next week ciao